Good morning. Today is March 1st, 2024, and we're starting with the commentary. Personal rights and remedies, personal injuries, economic losses, and matters of inheritance are among the many matters of personal rights and responsibilities included in this section of various civil laws. Some regulations are merely directory in nature, while others set forth specific remedies. These civil laws are designed to regulate daily activities in a fair manner for each citizen and to instill a sense of order throughout society. Numbers 5, 5. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, When a man or woman wrongs another in any way, and so is unfaithful to the Lord, that person is guilty and must confess the sin he has committed. He must make full restitution for his wrong, add one-fifth to it, and give it all to the person he has wronged. But if that person has no close relative to whom restitution can be made for the wrong, the restitution belongs to the Lord and must be given to the priest, along with the ram which atonement is made for him. All the sacred contributions the Israelites bring to a priest will belong to him. Each man's sacred gifts are his own, but what he gives to the priest will belong to the priest. In all cases of illegal possession of an ox, a donkey, a sheep, a garment, or any other lost property about which somebody says, This is mine. Both parties are to bring their cases before the judges. The one whom the judges declare guilty must pay back double to his neighbor. If a man gives his neighbor silver or goods for safekeeping, and they are stolen from the neighbor's house, the thief, if he is caught, must pay back double. But if the thief is not found, the owner of the house must appear before the judges to determine whether he has laid his hands on the other man's property. If a man gives a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any other animal <coughs> to his neighbor for safekeeping and it dies or is injured or is taken away while no one is looking, the issue between them must be settled by the taking <clears throat> of an oath before the Lord that the neighbor did not lay hands on the property, the others, the other person's property. The owner is to accept this, and no restitution is required. But if the animal is stolen from the neighbor, he must make restitution to the owner. If it was torn to pieces by a wild animal, he shall bring in the remains as evidence, and he will not be required to pay for the torn animal. If a man borrows an animal from his neighbor, and it is injured or dies while the owner is not present, he must make restitution. But if the owner is with the animal, the borrower will not have to pay. If the animal is hired, the money paid for the hire covers the loss. Um, and we have a one-sentence commentary here, seduction. In addition to the impropriety involved, there is an economic aspect to cases of seduction. Exodus 22, verse 16. If a man seduces a virgin who is not pledged to be married and sleeps with her, he must pay the bride price, and she shall be his wife. If her father absolutely refuses to give her to him, he must still pay the bride price for virgins. If a man uncovers a pit or digs one and fails to cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls into it, the owner of the pit must pay for the loss. He must pay its owner, and the dead animal will be his. If a fire breaks out and spreads into thorn bushes so that it burns shocks of grain, or standing grain, or the whole field, the one who started the fire must make restitution. If a man grazes his livestock in a field or vineyard, 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 and lets them stray, and they graze in another man's field, he must make restitution from the best of his own field or vineyard. 
If a bull gores a man or a woman to death, the bull must be stoned to death, and its meat must not be eaten, but the owner of the bull will not be held responsible. If, if, however, the bull has had the habit of goring, and the owner has been warned, but has not kept it pen, penned up, and it kills a man or a woman, the bull must be stoned, and the owner also must be put to death. However, if payment is demanded on him, he may redeem his life by paying whatever is demanded. This law also applies if the bull gores a son or daughter. If the bull gores a male or a female slave, the owner must pay thirty shekels of silver to the master of the slave, and the bull must be stoned. If a man's bull injures the bull of another, and it dies, they are to sell the live one and divide both the money and the dead animal equally. However, if it was known that the bull had the habit of goring, yet the owner did not keep it pinned up, the owner must pay animal for animal, and the dead animal will be his. If anyone who takes the life of someone's animal, anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution, life for life. When you build a new house, make a per parapet around your roof so that you may not bring the guilt of bloodshed on your house if someone falls from the roof. <clears throat> do not do not take advantage of a hired man who is poor and needy whether he is a brother Israelite or an alien living in one of your or your towns. Pay him his wages each day before sunset, because he is poor and can, is can, counting on it. Otherwise he may cry to the Lord against you, and you will be guilty of sin. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of the temporary residents, living among you and mem members of their clans born in your country and they will become your property you can will them to your children as inherited property and can make them slaves for life but you must not rule over your fellow israelite ruthlessly this is a really long one today okay if a slave has taken refuge with you, do not hand him over to his master. Let him live among you wherever he likes, in whatever town he chooses. Do not oppress him. If a fellow Hebrew, a man or a woman, sells himself to you and serves you six years, in the seventh year you must let him go free. And when you release him, do not send him away empty-handed. Supply him liber liberally from your flock, your threshing floor, and your wine press. Give to him as the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. That is why I give you this command today. But if your servant says to you, I do not want to leave you, because he loves you and your family, and is in and is well off with you, then take an awl and push it through his earlobe into the door, and he will become your servant for life. Do the same for your maidservant. I remember um, Pastor Max talking about that. Do not consider it a hardship to set your servant free because he, because his service it, to you these six years has been worth twice as much as that of a hired hand, and the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. These are the laws you are to set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years, but in the seventh year he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free alone, but if he has a wife, 
When he comes, she is to go with him. If his master gives him a wife, and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master and my wife and children, and do not want to go free, then his master must take him before the judges. He shall take him to the door or the doorpost, and pierce his ear with an awl, then he will be his servant for life. If a man sells his daughter as a servant, she is not to go free as, a men, as men servants do. If she does not please the master who has selected her for himself, he must let her be re redeemed. He has no right to sell her for foreigners because he has broken faith with her. If he selects her for his son, he must grant her the rights of a daughter. If he marries another woman, he must not deprive the first one of her food, clothing, and marital rights. If he does not provide her with these three things, she is to go free without any payment of money. Hold on a second. Uh, do not charge your brother interest, whether on money or food or anything else that may earn interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but not a brother Israelite, so that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you put your hand to in the land you are entering to possess. If you lend money to one of my people among you who is needy, do not be like the mon a money lender. Charge him no interest. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, return it to him by sunset, because his cloak is the only covering he has for his body. What else will he sleep in? When he cries out to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. Do not take a pair of millstones, not even the upper one, as security for a debt, because that would be taking a man's livelihood as security. When you make a loan of any kind to your neighbor, do not go into his house to get from what he is offering as a pledge. Stay outside and let the man to whom you are making the loan bring the pledge out to you. At the end of every seven years, you must cancel debts. This is how it is to be done. Every creditor shall cancel the loan he has made to his fellow Israelite. He shall not require payment from his fellow Israelite or brother, because the Lord's time for canceling debts has been proclaimed. You may require payment from a foreigner, but you must cancel any debt your brother owes you. However, there should be no poor among you. For in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess as your inheritance, he will richly bless you, if only you fully obey the Lord your God and are careful to follow all these commands I am giving you today. For the Lord your God will bless you, as he has promised, and you will lend to many nations, but will borrow from home. You will rule over many nations, but none will rule over you. If there is a poor man among your brothers in any of the towns of the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted, toward your bro poor brother. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend him whatever he needs. Be careful not to harbor this wicked thought. The seventh year, the year for canceling debts, is near, so that you do not show ill will toward your needy brother and give him nothing. He may then appeal to the Lord against you, and you will be found guilty of sin Give generously to him and do so without a grudging heart. Then, because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your brothers and toward the poor and needy in your land. Do not swear falsely by my name and so profane the name your God. I am the Lord. Moses said to the heads of the tribes of Israel, This is what the Lord commands. When a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by pledge, he must not break his word but must do everything he said. 
when a young woman still living in her father's house makes a vow to the Lord or obligates herself by a pledge, and her father hears about her vow or pledge, but says nothing to her, then all her vows and every pledge by which she obligated herself will stand. But if her father forbids her when he hears about it, none of her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand. The Lord will release her because her father has forbidden her. If she marries after she makes a vow or after her lips utter a rash promise by which she obligates herself and her husband hears about it but says nothing to her then her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand but if her husband forbids her when he hears about it he nullifies the vow and ob the ob that obligates her or the rash promise by which she obligates herself and the lord will release her any vow or obligation taken by a widow or divorced woman will be binding on her. If a woman living with her husband makes a vow or obligates herself by a pledge under oath, and her husband hears about it but says nothing to her and does not forbid her, then all her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand that if her husband nullifies them when he hears about them, then none of the vows or pledges that come from her lips will stand. Her husband has nullified them, and the Lord will release her. Her husband may confirm or nullify any vow she makes or any sworn pledge to deny herself, but if her husband says nothing to her about it from day to day, then he confirms all her vows or the pledges binding on her. He confirms them by saying nothing to her when he hears about them. If, however, he nullifies them some time after he hears about them, then he is responsible for her guilt. The, these are the regulations the Lord gave Moses concerning relationships between a man and his wife and between a father and his young daughter still living in his house. Very interesting. Do not steal. So this is about weights and measures. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or quantity. Use honest scales and honest weights, an honest ephah and an honest hin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Keep all my decrees and all my laws and follow them. I am the Lord. Do not have two differing weights in your bag, one heavy, one light. Do not have two differing measures in your house, one large, one small. You must have accurate and honest weights and measures, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. For the Lord your God detests anyone who does these things, anyone who deals dishonestly. If a man has two wives, and he loves one, but not the other, and both bear him sons, but the firstborn is the son of the wife he does not love, when he wills his property to his sons, he must not give the rights of the firstborn to the son of the wife he loves in preference to his actual firstborn, the son of the wife he does not love. He must acknowledge the son of his unloved wife, as the firstborn by giving him a double share of all he has. That son is the first sign of his father's strength. The right of the firstborn belongs to him. Okay, then here we have a commentary. Leather rate marriage. A custom of the ages is incorporated into the laws of Moses presumably to preserve the right of inheritance. When a man dies childless, his brother is to take the widow of, as a wife 
and to father a child in his brother's name. That first child will receive the deceased brother's inheritance, while any other children of the union will inherit, inherit through their natural father. The marriage itself receives its more modern name of leverate from the Latin word for a husband's brother. Interesting. An example of the custom was seen in the account of Tamar and Judah in Genesis 38. If brothers are living together and one of them dies without a son, his wife, his widow, must not marry outside the family. Her brothers, her husband's brother shall take her and marry her and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her. The first son she bears shall carry on the name of the dead brother so that his name will not be blotted out from Israel. However, if a man does not want to marry his brother's wife, she shall go to the elders at the town gate and say, My husband bro husband's brother refuses to carry on his brother's name in Israel. He will not fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to me. Then the elders of his town shall summon him and talk to him. If he persists in saying, I do not want to marry her, his brother's widow shall go up to him in the presence of the elders, take off one of his sandals, spit in his face and say this is what is done to the man who will not build up his brother's family line that man's line shall be known in israel as the fam family of the unsandaled the case of Ze zelophehad's daughters this is a commentary in anticipation of the settlement of canaan in the assignment of territory to each tribe and family, Moses is approached by the daughters of a man who had died without any sons to inherit a, por a portion of the promised land. Concerned about loss of family possessions, the daughters ask that land be assigned to the family through them. Moses agrees, but limits their marriages to men within the same tribe, so that their inheritance will not be transferred to another tribe. Why a Levirate marriage is not involved is not indicated. Perhaps the man had no brothers, but the case does indicate something of the status of women in a predominantly male-oriented society. Numbers 27, verse 1, The daughters of Zelophehad, son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Terza. They approached the entrance to the tent of meeting and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders in the whole assembly, and said, Our father died in the desert. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no son? Give us property among our father's relatives. So Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, what Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and turn their father's inheritance over to them. Say to the Israelites, if a man dies and leaves no son, turn his inheritance over to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan that he may possess it. This is to be a legal requirement from the Israelites as the Lord commanded Moses. The family heads of the clan of Gilead, son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, who were from the clans of the descendants of Joseph, 
came and spoke before Moses and the leaders, the heads of the Israelite families. They said, When the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land as an inheritance to the Israelites by lot, he ordered you to give the inheritance to your brother Zelophehad to his daughters. Now suppose they marry men from other Israelite tribes, then their inheritance will be taken from our ancestral inheritance and added to that of the tribe they married into. And so part of the inheritance allotted to us will be taken away. When the year of Jubilee for the Israelite com- Israelites comes, their inheritance will be added to that of the tribe into which they marry, and their property will be taken from the tribal inheritance of our forefathers. Then at the Lord's command, Moses gave this order to the Israelites. What the tribe of the descendants of Joseph is saying is right. This is what the Lord commands for Zelophehad's daughters. They may marry anyone they please, as long as they marry within the tribal clan of their father. No inheritance in Israel is to pass from tribe to tribe, for every Israelite shall keep the tribal land inherited from his forefathers. Every daughter who inheritance, inherits land in any Israel, Israelite tribe must marry someone in her father's tribal clan, so that every Israelite will possess the inheritance of his fathers. No inheritance may pass from tribe to tribe, for each Israelite tribe is to keep the land it inherits. So Zelophehad's daughters did as the Lord commanded Moses. Zelophehad's daughters, Mala, Terza, Hagla, Milka, and Noah, married their cousins on their father's sides. They married within the clans of the descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in their father's clan and tribe. These are the commands and regulations the Lord gave through Moses to the Israelites on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. That's it for today. That was a lot, but very interesting how God um, worked out the laws. And um, I, I, you, know, you can see a lot from today's laws still apply. A lot don't, but... All right, that's it for today. Have a great day. Love you guys.